Hey there, Father Michael here. When my Aunt Janice died a few years ago, I inherited quite a few things from her estate. But probably one of the most precious things was an audio cassette that she had made uh, in the early 1980s at one of her famous 4th of July picnics. She was a great hostess and cook and baker and that annual event was something the whole family uh, enjoyed every year as long as she was able. Well, my sister, who had been the executor of her estate, was going through her things and she found this cassette tape and she gave it to me and she said, I think you need to have this because this recording there of Chris and Phil, my two deceased sons. <clears throat> wow. Wow. I was like trembling as I took the cassette from her, like I was holding, you know, the Holy Grail to be able to hear my son's voices again was just overwhelming. I couldn't find, uh, you know, I, it took me a while to find the right time and, the, and enough courage uh, and the right listening device uh, to be able to listen to it. I didn't want to just listen to it uh, in any state of mind less than, you know, being fully present in the moment. So the first order of business was to locate a cassette player because I don't have one. I haven't had one in decades. <laughs> and I don't think I know anybody that has one either. But I finally found one. And then I thought, well, okay, where do I want to do this? And so I decided that it would be better if I took the cassette to church some evening uh, where I would sit in the silence and in the presence of God, and I would listen to this recording of my two deceased sons and probably have a good, long, ugly cry. What better place to have an emotional meltdown than in my father's house? So, I got it all set up. It is approaching sunset on a beautiful summer day. The sun is beaming through those exquisite stained glass windows on the west side of the church, casting bright patterns of light all around me. I've lit the candles on the altar. I've tested the cassette player to see if it's working. I got the tape inserted and I'm ready to go. And I also have a jumbo box of Kleenex sitting right next to me. And I make the sign of the cross and I'm already starting to cry when I hit play. It was more than a recording of my two sons. It was a recording of everybody else who happened to be at that picnic, most of whom are no longer alive. My grandparents were there. My parents, my great aunts were there, my siblings. And as I'm listening, in the midst of it, there is an extended recording of my sons, Christopher and Philip, at the organ bench. Janice was something of a musician and had an organ in her house. And the boys are on the organ bench trying to make music, but they're fighting. <laughs> and they're calling each other names, like stupid and 
dad he won't share. In other words, they were just being kids, annoying kids. I am the father of three sons. And I don't know much about parenting, but what I do know is that being a parent is enough to test anyone's mettle. Raising them while working 50 hours a week and finishing my undergrad degrees and then working on my master's, man. That was a challenging time to be alive, to say the least. The older two, Christopher and Philip, were only a year and a half apart. So on the one hand, they grew up together. They shared a room. They shared clothing and toys and a lot of mutual interests like falling off garage roofs or breaking bones or uh, getting stuck up in the apple tree or lighting each other on fire while playing with matches under the dining room table in the wee hours of the morning. Not even making that up. But they were also constantly bickering. He looked at me. Dad, he's on my side. Dad, he won't give me some. He got more than I did. I heard all of that on that cassette tape and it brought me back to reality. There were no tears shed listening to that cassette tape because I was like, well, damn, they were straight up annoying. <laughs> and sometimes they were. In Hosea, chapter 11, God is talking about the people of Israel as, as God's own beloved child. And in verse uh, verse 1 and 8 say, When Israel was a child, I loved him. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? To me, that suggests that the way I felt listening to that cassette tape is exactly how God must feel every damn day day. On the one hand, God loves us unconditionally, in a crazy kind of way, in a promiscuous uh, kind of way that is beyond our human understanding. God looks at us and God sees more than we will ever see about ourselves. God sees the divinity that he placed there from the very beginning. And God sees that we are good, along with everything else God has created. God straight up does the happy dance every time we make a good decision or we engage in crazy things like, I don't know, loving our neighbor, doing something compassionate and generous or in any way that we somehow give a hint that we are, in fact, daughters and sons of God. God is all about that. But on the other hand, ugh, we as human beings are straight up annoying AF. We whine. We fight. We complain when we think somebody else is getting more blessings than we are. We get so infatuated with our religion, with our interpretation of scripture, with our ways of doing things to the exclusion of other people, when we judge people. 
we bitch, when we get sick, and when we get older, and our health declines, but we're not known <laughs> for expressing gratitude of any kind when things are going great. We are ungrateful, entitled little shits most days. And yet, God's love for us never falters. In that quote from Hosea, God is simply restating the obvious. God's love does not end. God is not going to abandon us or hand us over to any lesser kind of love, even though we are annoying AF. Because God's love is different from ours. It is all-encompassing. God's compassion surrounds us like we're wrapped in bubble wrap 24-7. God did not give up on the people of Israel, if you know your Hebrew scriptures. God does not give up on any one of us. So we need to stop judging and dismissing other people. We need to stop withholding love from other people. And I think all of that starts by loving ourselves with a lot more compassion that we are accustomed to giving ourselves. Love your neighbor as yourself, Jesus says. Well. If we don't love ourselves, the proof is in the pudding. And that, I believe, is the core problem in this world today. We don't truly love ourselves. Pray with me. God of constant compassion and love. We open our hearts to your presence in this moment, offering up a simple word of thanks. We acknowledge that we have been ungrateful and entitled. Help us to be better today. Help us to focus on that core of divinity, that flickering flame of light within each one of us. And as we celebrate that gift of divinity given to us at the moment of our conception, help us also to realize that we have responsibilities, that we can be better than we were yesterday and that somehow, when all is said and done, we can make a difference in the lives of other people. Give us courage. Give us insight today. And help us to be just a little less ridiculous. We ask all this in the name of our brother and teacher, Jesus the Christ, the one who is, who was, and who is to come again. Amen. God bless you.